for those for those watching and listening to this, that'll eventually become the uh, the kind of the format of my off season vlog. Believe twenty twenty four. Um, what we wanted to do, what I wanted to do, I thought it'd be really cool to highlight what our coaching process looks like, which means I've got my personal coach out of the team, and that's Brian. So Brian Myers can be my off season coach, which. I, I wanted to spread the love even more. Like I've got Berto handles me during prep. Jeff is my posing coach. Brad is the heart and soul, the man who, who pumps me up and is always the one who has uh, believed in me. I want to bring you in now as you know the, the, the most recent coach and someone who has a lot of programming expertise. Yeah, so I'm really excited, Brian. Thank you so much for being willing to be my my coach for my first pro off season. My pleasure, and thank you for the trust and the opportunity. I, I'm waiting for your signed code of ethics to come through before we can proceed. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna sign that, and I know it's required of all athletes. But the whole thing about you know believe 2024, like I don't really believe that I can be a pro, so I need to. Part of the part that I'm gonna edit out because no one wants to see this is how to beat the drug test because we know that all natural bodybuilders are actually cheats, as we've learned from. Uh, the comments on YouTube, the most reliable place, second to Wikipedia. <laughs> you know, in all seriousness, I really appreciate it, man. It's a pleasure. It's going to be a cool oh, collaboration. The first thing I thought was hilarious was going over the the feedback that you and the other four coaches gave me. I actually took notes on the list of what each of you guys said. So I'll go over one by one. Berto, back thickness, glutes quads hams i think was the way he saw it and also we need to continue to keep bringing up the things you were bringing up you know your delts and your back width brad uh back thickness and width glutes uh and then he also said that my quads might come up a little bit with the glutes indicating that that would be beneficial and then oh and your t-shirt muscles so shoulders and arms <laughs> like, all right brian you came in then with uh quads glutes hams as overall lower body improvements there's been a few mentions of like my quads aren't a weakness. It's just that with how tall I am and needing to make my waist look smaller, I would benefit from having bigger quads mm -hmm. rather than being a weak point. Is that, would you agree with that? I agree. I have been trying to bring up my upper body to match my legs. And now that I've finally done it, here we are. So here you are. And then finally we got Jeff and he said, uh, basically accentuate the X frame, which is going to require quads, delts, thicker lats, but also wider lats. And then he mentioned uh, t-shirt muscles, and unlike Brad, he meant the chest as well. So essentially, if we were to combine all the coaches' feedback... It's like a full body full body specialization phase. No, 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 no. My abs and calves <laughs> are good, bro. Yeah, abs abs for sure. Cat, calves are... You're just good. <laughs> you're yeah. just, you've just, you've had enough to, you've, had, you've, put, you've put in plenty of effort with the calf specialization, and it's, they did improve. Yeah, the take home was your calves improved and nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think overall, you're just tall for that class. And I think that's, uh, there's nothing, I think, disproportionate. It's not like in 2011 when, you know, okay, we need to bring up your upper body because you're bottom heavy, you know. I think it's just a, a balanced approach. And I think when, when it comes to, maybe specializing a little bit in some areas. I think we can do that primarily through like exercise order, um, maybe reallocating some of the stuff throughout the week. But, um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, I think the critiques were, were accurate and mostly just a byproduct of, of your height in that class. So what were two weeks, three going to be three weeks this weekend. Is that right? Yeah, it's Friday. So we're almost three weeks post show. You know, you, you've, expedited the recovery to some degree um but it's also there i think there's still a ways to go and i think that's that's one thing that i would like to see you a little bit in like through the recovery acute recovery phase kind of by the end of the year so the thing is is this is believe 2024 because currently the wnbf rule is that you have to compete every two years so the pressure for me to compete in 2025 means that i want every month out of this time period to be available to me to potentially put on muscle, which means if I come out the gates too aggressively and put on a lot of body fat, then there's going to be a mini cut or two in my future. Um, but likewise, if I am 
too conservative coming out of the gates, it might not even be two months. Or it, it'll be a long period of time before I'm actually recovered to where I can put on muscle. Um, for me, I came out so preserved uh, psychologically and uh, so much in control that I'm, I can limit my own recovery by doing something more akin to a reverse diet. And I think I've realized that I have. So I'm only up uh, about five pounds over stage weight. And mm -hmm. I think we know that just by consuming a higher volume of food, having consistently topped off glycogen levels and the associated water, that could explain probably 75% of that. Mm -hmm. But I basically just went to six to 8,000 steps and then 26 to 2,800 calories and think, seeing where that would land me. All right, so so as you can see here, guys, I've got some a moving average of my body weight and then a, a weekly average. And this is just a, a spreadsheet that shows some different ways of looking at my body weight. So this is 6th of November all the way up till the 19th. And there's spotty weigh-ins the week of Worlds because I was traveling. But you can essentially see that my body weight was around 79-ish or the morning of the competition, if I had to guess. Um, and you can see here, after I flew home, um, there was some probably some dehydration. I was only 78.8. And then my body weight was slowly rising from being at that calorie intake of the high 2000s. Peaked at around 82. I thought I was doing good. I'm like, perfect. And then you can see it started to dip. And Monday this week, I, like I lost a full pound from a day to day with that approach. Um, had a little bit more the next day and started having like basically just a little another 100, extra 100 calories. And I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm back up to 81.7, 81.6, okay. And then I dropped a pound again or, or close to it. And that was yesterday. So we had a Christmas party that I went to last night. And I ate like I was at a Christmas party. And I probably had uh, close to 4,000 calories. But um, yeah, I'm up 1.3 uh, kilos today from yesterday. Yeah. Um, that's probably a good sign. I feel recovered. I feel a lot better when I was dieted. But the thing that is probably a more objective gauge is my sleep and i'm still like popping awake at 5 a.m kind of no matter what and i'm only getting four or five hours of sleep in a row and then i have to work to get back to sleep to get to six to seven hours and i'm never clocking more six to seven hours of sleep i mean overall it's a good sign that there's that control you know i think yeah. each prep gets easier i think you know if we can get you between 83 84 um you know, between now and the end of the year, I think that'd be a good spot where we can make more efficient use of our time once we pull back and, and gain more conservatively. So I think originally you had mentioned, you know, maybe topping out around like 86, was it? Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking. So I, I up that just a little bit, um, okay. just because I think you'll, we have the time for it. You know, if we gain just under like, on average, like a half percent roughly a month, which mm -hmm. I think for, for our purposes, I think going more conservative than that would just kind of extend the timeline to some degree. Okay. So um, getting up to about 88, I mean, that's, if we're gaining that conservatively, I mean, that's almost a full year of being in a surplus. Typically in the pre-prep phase, between like 10 and 12% over. I mm -hmm. think the leaner we can start, the better. Um, so like 10% yeah. over from where you were competing, it's like, 86 and a half roughly yeah, um that's good and i think there's there's benefits to dipping just a hair below that i don't always do that but sometimes just getting a little bit below that you can really kind of assess like okay how much progress did i make because that's still pretty lean then there's a couple options there you know you can either dip a little bit below and eat up into the start of prep which from a recovery perspective is probably yeah, make sure you're not dieted yeah, before you start you're, your you're, diet. You're in a consistent surplus, you know. So, and it's not like we're dipping that far below. So let's say we go to eighty-five and a half, and we're losing, I mean, roughly like a half percent per week. It could be more than that. We could get more assertive. It's just we we probably don't need to given the the timeline we have. Um, and then we would have about you know eleven to twelve weeks of slow gaining after that, um, just to to gain that that kilo essentially. And I know originally, um, you know, you'd kind of thrown out the, the timeline of, of March, um, to start prep. I don't know if we'll need that. So if we start in April and we're losing like roughly like on average a half percent. And by that, it's like, if we were to take the whole prep and average it out, like you're going to start out probably more assertive. And then, you know, at the end too, we, we want it to slow down and we want a, a soft landing there. So if we do that, I mean, it's about 21 weeks of fat loss. Um, 
threw in a few diet breaks, threw in, you know, a few weeks of eating into the show. And then that'll put us or like late September being, being ready. Um, I like it, man. It's very similar to what I had. It's just it is. maybe it's very similar. It's just kind of adjusting some of the start dates a little bit. It's allowing had... me to get heavier, which may, I mean, it's probably beneficial. And then probably, I think, and so then too. basically taking the rate that I was proposing to get to 86 and going, we'll use that. But after a mini cut from 88 mm-hmm. back down to 86 to only gain like a kilo, you yeah. know, which, which yeah. I think makes a lot of sense. Yep. Should we you... sh- transition to the, 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 the training program? kind of go over maybe how your training history was like this past off season. Um, yeah. So as you're, as you're pulling that up, I can talk about that a little bit. So what took me from being uh, bottom heavy in the small upper body was training my upper body more, more frequently and harder. So um, the good news is that I have pretty good recovery capacity up top. Like I train my upper body pretty much every day I train and I train five to six days per week. And I'm typically doing between 15 to 25 sets for my muscle groups with a little more emphasis on delts and lats. And the average RPE is probably a nine. Um, I'm really sore. And I did get sore for a bit when I started incorporating like more length and partials and uh, exercises, which put more tension at a length and position. Uh, and it really seemed to work. So what I did for, you know, from 2019 onward to now was... I did even more volume for my delts and lats. I started every session with four sets on delts, four sets on lats on top of the work I was already doing. And as you can see in this before and after, which I'll throw up on screen in this first picture that my delts are now fuller, which has really kind of fixed the symmetry problems in this pose, in my opinion. And then in the second picture, you can see, especially in that right lat, that that's filled it out as well. So I finally have that kind of X frame. So it obviously worked. But what it's told me is that I just have to do a lot, do more and do it hard and do it effectively. Yeah. And I think the, the high frequency approach you've done for a while, cause you were doing like six full body days a week heading into 2019, right? In prep, I was doing six training sessions. And then for most of 2018, I was doing five. And the reason why that happens for me is because I start, I start to lose the the, the the mental switch to go hard on compounds deep into mm-hmm. prep. So I start doing more uh, isolation and cable work and machines. Really long sessions that drag during prep are harder. So I would prefer to do like six 45-minute sessions in a week than five 70-minute sessions that have a few more like free weight compound exercises. Mm-hmm. But I'm committed to being monogamous for the first time. <laughs> I'm no longer polyamorous with strength sport and bodybuilding. I'm literally all the chips in. I don't care if my squat bench and deadlift are 75% of what they are now. I'm, I don't plan on doing a powerlifting meet again or training for it until I think I've milked what I can get out of my physique as a pro bodybuilder. I think I need to, for, for an optimization perspective, even just maintaining my strength on the big three got hard and prep. Like, I don't want to have to spend the time dedicated to do a single here and there on the, on the lifts. And I'd rather mm-hmm. just, like, I'm motivated. My mindset's there. But now I'm ready to go all in on bodybuilding. So that's kind of why my training has become that. I found in my off season for my 2019 prep that I could get more recovery for the same volume uh, or the same recovery for more volume when I never had a dedicated leg day, um, essentially. And I was doing, you know, some more dominant leg days. Like I might do a leg press and like a leg curl, leg extension, but then I would do some upper body work on top of it because that was the only way I could reach the volume levels that seemed to be necessary to balance me upper to lower. The lower body doesn't need nearly as much, it seems. I learned that both from getting hip surgery in 2017 and all the time leading up to that was just trying to maintain the strength I had. I was like, wow, my quads and my, my hams are really holding on quite well. The one thing I did notice though, is that I did get some, I think glute atrophy post uh, that surgery. And my Mm -hmm. wife noticed it as well. And I was looking at stage pictures in 2011, like I had like bigger glutes. So I think the powerlifting obviously is not sufficient enough to get the glutes back to where they were. Now there's, I'm excited. I might actually increase my stage weight because we're actually trying to bring my legs up. And that's, that's how you do it. Not bringing up your medial delt, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a good recap. 
you know, one thing with the the powerlifting training, like just having a bar on your back, it, it adds another element of psychological fatigue, you know, or just the having to walk out a heavy squat. Like anytime you're, even if you add like a heavy single to the front of your training session and then do work after that, I mean, that's, that's adding probably 15, 20 minutes to your session, you know, just warming up for that. And so what I proposed was actually a, a five day split. And so this is kind of pulling from uh, Eric's training here, doing a, a six day rotation here where he's doing upper back legs um, and chest. And then he's got the delts, lats, arms, calves, upper back legs. You know, it's more of like a glute ham focused chest on day three, delts, lats, arms, calves on day four, Day five, upper back, legs, chest. Day six, glutes, lats, shoulders, arms. So it's, I think maybe an additional day off can be beneficial. So I, I have a, a five-day layout here. One of the, the things that I would like to focus on is separating the areas of emphasis a little bit. The approach I took was trying to place the priority early in the session, um, and so what I have here is like a chest back and then lateral delts starting, you know, we have like an incline press, like a sagittal plane pull down and there's tons of variations of this. So we're, you know, I so want it's to more of like a, a neutral grip basically. Yeah. Like a neutral grip, you know, if you want to do like the unilateral kind of pulling around, um, you know, in a more stretch position, that's an option. I usually try to get the biggest bang for my buck early in the session with like length and biased movements that can be harder on back movements just because the you know just the biomechanical nature of those it, it, they tend to be harder in shortened positions as the moment arm gets bigger but i think even just exploring those lengthened positions with like unilateral work like you did in the off season has benefit unilateral work i think is is our friend in that regard gotcha so for these first two exercises, as you're saying that, I'm thinking there's a hoist incline press that is, you can get it really, really nice and deep uh, into the pec. And then for the um, the pull down, it sounds like I should be doing like a like a single arm cable pull down. That'd be a good choice. Yeah, I think that's kind of the best option we have, you know, okay. is, is something where we're kind of pulling slightly across the body um, okay. and just making sure we have resistance there. So then, you know, we'll, we'll do some like, flat pressing, something more like sternal biased. Um, this, I think it, it's it's probably less important to do like a lengthened biased movement. To me, logically, it makes more sense to, when you're strongest, hit the positions where, where you're going to benefit from high tension. So how do you feel about like a uh, like a close grip feet up press, something that allows me to get a good range on a, yeah, a medium grip I think bench that, press? That would be good. Um, so transverse row is just basically an upper back elbows flared row. So there's a hoist rocket uh, row. It's not chest supported, but it is very hard in the lengthened position. Yeah, and I think that's what we're after. Okay. And then I just have some like lower pec cable flies here. Okay. Now, the only thing I would say is for when we get down to the flies with the pullovers, I get a ton of peck out of pullovers. Do you get peck in the bottom end of the range? No, the top. Yeah. So, so, so I have you doing flies and then I want to keep the, it's, it's a shorter range for like, so I'm, I'm kind of restricting the end range. Um, mm, I see. So what I do is I'll grab just like the rubber end ball thing. Okay. And you're standing straight. Yeah. And then I just kind of shift my hip into that side. Well, that, that actually sounds good. So yeah, these RPEs, like 11 here is like concentric. Go to failure. Basically. Yep. Then we have some cable lateral raises to, to finish that day off. Perfect. All right. So I didn't want to put arms on this day just because the duration of it's getting lengthy. So lower plus arms here. Um, you know, arms are, are a focus, but they're not the primary focus, which is why we're putting them at, at the end. Some quad bias squat. This could be like your hack squat at home, maybe. The, the options I have, like if I want to do seated leg curls, that's at the Y, but then the leg press is the only non-free weight leg exercise that's compound. 
you could do, could you do this one at home? This lower yeah. leg? So maybe we do hacks here and then we do the narrow leg press here. Perfect. Since we're not doing a hinge here on this day, I think seated leg curls, like getting some lengthened exposure for hamstrings is good there. So the next one, um, I have like a glute bias Bulgarian split squat with like rear foot elevated. Um, so this is, you know, we, we hit quads pretty hard on the, the leg press. Split squats, it's kind of like our primary like lengthened glute movement for the day. But with that rear foot elevated, it's also going to hit the rec fem on that back leg. So, um, you know, to, to bias glutes, you know, there's more forward lean, usually less knee flexion. Um, and it's a, it feels like a pretty short range of motion, really. Um, so this next one, any short and biased glute movement. Back extension? That would be fine. Yeah, I, I can take it down to a pretty low angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the reason we're doing this is, you know, the, the glutes tend to have good leverage near hip extension. So we're, we're getting a little bit of best of both worlds there. Calf raise, the hoist rocket calf raise. And I would say, let's do two to three second pause. Um, and then for arms, like a cable overhead extension for triceps, face away or Bay Asian cable curls, whatever you want to call them. And what we're after there is like you're starting in a lengthened position and the peak, peak resistance is more lengthened biased. And then since triceps were, I think your biceps are set. Like, I don't think you necessarily need to bring that up. I think triceps maybe oh, a little bit. So actually calves, biceps, and my abs are already at the True. pro champ level. I think, I think they're, Oof. Yeah, they're there. They're there. All right. And then I just had like a, like a press down of choice there, but just doing myo reps there. How do you feel about drop sets? I, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I think I'm yeah. just looking for a time efficient drops. I like drops. Okay. So then we have a day off. Then we have another upper day that's more comprehensive here. Um, but it's, it's focused more on like exercise orders, more prioritizing back. So cable lap pull down. What I mean by this is like a wide grip. And then the flat press of choice here. Actually, that same hoist incline, you can adjust it to be a decline. So we can go hoist chest press there. Next thing, like a seated row, sagittal row, something like 90 degrees or slightly below. Let's so go a um, good stretch. seated single arm cable row. You're going to be doing basically eight sets of chest on this day. Um, and then 10 for back. Because then I have you doing like a another upper back row. Cool. Let's go, um, yeah, chest supported dumbbell row on that one. These ones, I picked something that's going to be, because we have a shoulder arm day, something that's not super length and biased here. So like a tricep press down, hammer curls. And then you want to do drop sets again on these? Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, the incline uh, dumbbell lateral raise, I think we can just leave as, uh, as my reps. All right, um, so the next lower day, starting with a hinge, RDLs, and then this we're gonna do hacks, right? Yes, just because I'll be at home, I'll need to do standing cable leg curl there. Um, leg extension, standing, I assume? Yep. I threw in some seated, you don't have to do it. Can't do it. So actually, what I can do is I can do leg press calf raises. Yeah, it's gonna be like five sets on that, I think we're good. Then I can get back to a reasonable volume. So this one's, I mean, there's some chest in here too, but vertical press, I don't, do you have a preference there? Yeah, actually, I really like uh, seated Smith machine. Okay, yeah, I do too. It's one of the 3D Smith machines, so I can actually oh, press nice. up and behind my head. Nice. So a free weight preacher curl, even if you want to do like length and partials there, like just take out the dead spot. And then I have the, the dips here. So this is kind of like a dual chest tricep. Can we make that a hoist rocket dip machine? And then for a rear delt movement, like a rear delt row. Um, yeah, put that as hoist mid row. Then I have you doing another overhead tricep. Mm -hmm. Incline French press. All right, concentration curls. I just wanted something not length and biased here that's easy. 
mile reps probably better option so order of operations here on shoulders arms day what do you think about shoulders with mid row paired as APS yeah why don't we just go mile reps on the lateral raises and then I can just do uh, three uh, APS's for the arms so yeah let's go um, cross body lateral raise I like it awesome Brian well I really appreciate it I think this is going to be good um, got me an extra day of rest and I think we got some some programming things in here that I haven't tried yet that I'm excited to try like the Bulgarian split squat um, that cable lap pull and I also like the rationale so well look look man we'll, we'll run it for a month and then we'll do another call like this and, and I'll give you the feedback exactly sounds good dude awesome I will stop recording